midnight, my eyes burning from staring at the screen. I had just hours left to finish a critical report for an AI nonprofit that I believed in deeply, and nothing was coming together. The irony wasn't lost on me. I, an AI expert, was failing to put together a report on the very technology that I am dedicated to understanding. My computer was a digital junkyard filled with half-formed ideas, research notes, and interview transcripts. Fragments that stubbornly refused to come together into a coherent whole. My heart sank as the clock ticked onward. This wasn't just any report. This was my chance to influence how we guide AI systems that will touch millions of lives. And I was it. In desperation, I needed something that almost felt like a cop-out. I'd been reluctant to ask AI for help because it felt like cheating. And I was afraid that I would be judged for not doing the work myself. But then I dumped that entire mess into ChatGPT and watched it create a beautiful, organized framework for my own chaos. That's when I realized our greatest fears about AI, that it will take our jobs, drain our creativity, even replace us, are not inevitable outcomes. We can overcome our fears about AI and shape an AI future that works for all of us through those qualities that AI lacks. Our human creativity, our values, and our judgment. Hi, I'm Devorah Grazer, and I've been working with technology for over 40 years, from learning to program at the age of 16, to launching multiple startups, to helping innovators protect their valuable ideas. And the one thing I've learned through all of this, it is never just about the technology. It is about who gets to shape and control the technology. When I was 16, I built my first computer, surrounded by the optimism of a new digital age. It was the dawn of the internet, when we believed that technology would unite us, dissolve all barriers, and amplify all our voices. I remember the thrill of that first internet connection, believing that we are entering an era of unprecedented freedom and possibility. Then, I became a programmer for the Human Genome Project, contributing directly to one of humanity's greatest scientific achievements, decoding the blueprint of life, leading to cures for cancer and other diseases. The sky was the limit, and I was definitely a techno-optimist. But then came the betrayal that broke my geeky heart. I watched as the internet went from a tool of human flourishing to one of control, focused on profit rather than progress. Do you remember the first time that an ad appeared in your public feed related to your private online conversations? I do. I felt violated. The tech companies were grabbing all of our hopes, dreams, and fears and repackaging them as commodities to be bought and sold. And do you remember when we thought internet would give voice to the voiceless? Today, just five tech giants control what billions see and hear. Algorithms that should be connecting us are instead dividing us, pushing us apart into separate digital echo chambers. I watched as communities I loved fracture along lines drawn by recommendation engines, optimized for engagement at any cost. And then I realized with growing horror that AI was going the same way as the internet, only faster and with far greater consequences for all of us. Here's an example. In 2024, the Society of Authors published a report showing that 26% of illustrators had already lost work due to generative AI. Why? 
because companies can use AI models trained on the output of thousands of artists without their consent or compensation. This isn't some distant hypothetical situation happening over there to somebody else. It's happening to real people with real livelihoods right now. And it isn't just artists. Coders, writers, designers, even therapists are watching as their expertise is packaged and sold without their permission. If we don't take action right now, we won't just lose jobs. We'll lose what little autonomy we have left over the technologies that increasingly dominate our daily lives. And AI isn't just any other technology. We humans have always used technology to distribute our capabilities, writing to distribute knowledge, the electrical grid to distribute power. But AI is fundamentally different. For the first time, we can distribute human cognitive capabilities. AI mimics our thought processes and is operating increasingly autonomously. Since just last year, AI assistants have been embedded in products that millions, if not billions of us, use every day. I, for one, can't seem to keep the AI assistants for Google and Microsoft turned off. It's like zombie AI, always on, always listening. And AI is becoming optimized for power. Every day, AI algorithms make decisions that affect our daily lives, from whether we'll get hired, or get housing, or even get access to healthcare. And because AI accelerates everything, it's even accelerating its own grab for power and control, egged on by its human masters. In 10 years' time, will we have any autonomy left? When I was young, we used to believe that technology would empower the average Joe. But now, I fear for my grandchildren's future in a world increasingly dominated by opaque algorithms. We're all in a race, and most of us don't even know we're running. Every day, the path narrows between AI being a tool for human flourishing or instead becoming the most sophisticated tool for human exploitation and control that the world has ever seen. We've gone pretty rapidly from AI will cost a few jobs, but don't worry, there'll be others, to anthropic CEO stating that in just a few years, we could reach 20% unemployment due to AI. The window of opportunity to choose our AI path is closing rapidly, and I, for one, will not stand by silently. Right now, I feel a mixture of dread and hope. Dread, because we're watching history repeat itself, but hope, because this time we have the knowledge and experience to choose a different path. We know that technological revolutions are not inevitable forces of nature, they're human constructs that can be shaped by human choices and human values. And AI needs our human touch more than ever. Do you remember the earliest generative AI models which when confronted with the mistake they had made, would say, I'm just an AI, distancing themselves from human interactions. But now the models have learned to say, I'm sorry, I'll try to do better next time, mirroring human responses and emotions. In 2023, Microsoft published a report in which they found that users who were polite to their AI assistants, saying please and thank you, received more detailed and more helpful responses than users who are not. Every day, we are shaping AI in our own image. But then I ask myself, 
in whose image, with whose values, and whose vision will AI be shaped now and in the future? Last year, I joined an AI course at Oxford University, led by the brilliant Ajit Jayokar. We were a pretty diverse bunch, ranging from technical experts to complete beginners. I remember one marketing executive saying that AI felt like a foreign language that she could never master. But then I watched as my teammates worked on our projects and worked through our problems with AI, and I watched them go from fearful to curious to confident. By the end of that course, that marketing executive was confidently using AI to design her marketing campaigns. We didn't become AI experts. Instead, we became co-creators, learning that what we needed was our curiosity, our interactions, and of course, access. Here's another example. In 2024, a report of an experiment was published in Science based on work done by UCL and the University of Exeter. They took 293 participants in a creative writing experiment and allowed them to use generative AI. And those participants who chose to use generative AI created stories that were found to be 10% more creative and 22% more interesting. So we see that AI can boost our capabilities and amplify our voices. But then I wonder what happens if only some voices get amplified with AI. That's why I believe that we have the obligation to interact with AI and engage with it and not retreat. And for that reason, I have created a framework with four parts that we can all use to interact with generative AI. And these four parts are explore, contribute, connect, and bridge. First, become an active explorer. Spend 30 minutes this week experimenting with an AI tool in your area. If you're a teacher, try using AI to create a personalized lesson plan. If you're an artist, Try using AI to extend your visual vocabulary. Two, become an active contributor. When you use AI tools, give detailed feedback, not just thumbs up or thumbs down. Send suggestions to the companies directly or through social media. Trust me, they're listening. Each time that you engage with AI and give detailed feedback, you are voting for the kind of AI that you want to see in this world. Three, connect. Join one of the many AI ethics and guidance organizations like For Humanity that I belong to, or the Responsible AI Collective. Can't find one in your field or locale? Start your own. Even five people meeting regularly can generate powerful ideas. Four, become a bridge builder. When you run into someone who knows less about AI than you do, help them out. Support organizations that provide AI education and empowerment for everyone. Start a workshop at your local library where you show folks how to use AI safely and responsibly. Remember these four parts. Explore, contribute, connect, and bridge build. Together they form a powerful flywheel that enables you to have more influence over the kind of AI that you want to see in your part of the world. We know that AI can boost our human capabilities and can even help us create a future full of human flourishing, but only if we all join together to guide that future. So tonight, pick one action from that framework. Start small, but start now. The window of opportunity to shape our AI future is closing rapidly. We need your voice, your creativity, to make certain that AI works for all of us. This isn't about 
individual capabilities. It's about creating a joyful collective chorus. And every time that you explore, contribute, connect, and bridge build, you are adding your voice to that chorus. Now, I would like you to please close your eyes and imagine a future in which AI works for everyone, individuals, families, organizations, even corporations. Everyone is included and no one is left out. Now open your eyes, go out there, and let's build that AI future we all deserve together. Thank you.